Hello guys, it's me Karthik. Hope you guys are doing really good. So here in this playlist, we are learning about the quad schedulers, right? So we made a couple of videos like introduction of the quad scheduler, how to build the jobs with the help of quad scheduler, trigger details, all those things we have learned. That is good. Now what we are going to do as part of today's tutorial is when my jobs are running, I wanted to get the job details so that I'll come to know what jobs are running as simple as that. Cool. Nice. So for that, I need to have an API. So I'm taking a get mapping here, something like get all jobs I'm taking here. And as of now, let me keep it as a void method in future. I'm going to change it. Okay. So get all jobs. Okay. This is a endpoint is done, but there is no implementation, right? Let's go to our main scheduler. Okay, you don't need to worry about anything, guys. I'm going to put this in the uh, GitHub somewhere here. Okay, so that you can easily verify. Okay, so now I have a scheduler, right? So in the scheduler interface, get all the methods here. I'm using IntelliJ, so I'm going to put Control F2 here. If I type get I'm going to get all the methods something which is going to be useful for me here is I could see something like get job detail so it looks like it is going to return me a job detail of a specific job if I pass something called job key that is okay fine so I need this one right because I'm going to return all the job information cool but how do I build the job keys here if you come down a bit here, if you see here, get job keys method is returning me a set of job key. That is cool, right? This job key, I will pass it to this in my for loop so that for every job, I'll know the job details. That is what my implementation is going to be. That is cool, nice. But here, there is a one more like group matcher is there. What about this group matcher? What is this group matcher is going to do? Well, we'll discuss about that here. So, uh, I mean that also. Okay. So in my common utils, if you go here in the job details, I have given something called group name. If you have not given by default, it will take a default group name. If you have given that is taken as a group name. Okay. In your uh, overloaded identity method. Okay. Now you could see here, this is a group name I given. Basically, what is mean by this group name here? Okay, so group name is nothing but I am going to categorize my jobs into certain groups so that for me it's going to be very easy. Let's say in your application you want some jobs to run uh, for every five ten minutes, and the jobs are related to something called database and few other jobs are going to run every day end of the night where you know uh, it is going to identify if that person is having a birthday if that person is having the birthday then trigger some you know birthday email and that is i can categorize as a uh, email category and this database i can categorize as a database category so for me it's easy to identify easy to use so in that purpose i can have a group name okay nice now how it is going to be relevant this we'll see so go to the main scheduler here and in your scheduler create a public as of now keep it wide get all job details okay cool now take your uh, scheduler reference for me this is a scheduler so i am using scheduler dot get job keys get job keys group matcher okay now what is a group matcher group matcher dot uh, group matcher dot here you could see uh, any job group any group you have you can use this if you have not given any group uh, to the job that is fine suppose you have given so in that case what is going to happen then uh, group uh, a job group starts with you can use okay or else job group contains or else equals end with so this is a string method you can keep it okay let me keep something like this because I have passed group one okay 
but most of the times if you have not passed it so let me keep something called any group okay cool nice and even if you passed it no no need to worry this any group will going to fetch all the groups but the thing here is you need to put this in try catch because there could be a scheduler exception nice now this method is going to return me the set of job keys so if you introduce a local variable you know that the set of job keys cool now let me iterate over this job key okay job key let's say job key of job keys okay there are so many job keys here yeah job keys so i am now iterating over the job keys so now i have a each and every individual job key cool now scheduler dot get job details and i am going to pass this job key over there so job key okay now this will return me the job detail object for the specific job right i have this job detail object now let me keep a list of job detail variable job detail let's say like job detail list is equal to new array list of the job detail now each and every time i have this job detail i can simply go and add it here uh, something like job detail dot add of instead of wasting one variable over there i can simply do something like this okay now the job data job detail i have i am adding into the list and this list i am going to return so job detail list now it means this is my return type nice now this is my service i need to hook this into my controller did i did that yes i have did this with the help of all us constructor that object is going to be formed now this method i need which one get all job details method now this going to return me the list of job details now let's keep this way return type change it to list of job details now do this that should be sufficient right now here from all the so whenever the quad scheduler is running it will run the jobs now when you hit this api it will scan and it will return all the jobs okay if you are using a ram uh, job store this will return a whatever the jobs that are running in that period of time that will return we'll see that slowly okay no need to worry now let's start our application and uh, when i'm starting my application one job is running in my local uh, because i have scheduled in the post construct so when this bean is getting created this job will run for 20 times okay so when i'm doing that i need to build my uh, postman endpoint yeah this is my postman endpoint i'm ready now it is running the job right now hit on the send now you could see phone not phone not phone why okay no issue uh go to the controller get all jobs get all jobs uh now nothing is uh coming because this job is already executed so nothing is coming no issue no at all issue there is a one more controller called schedule here it is when i hit this controller when i hit this endpoint this is going to run another job so let me hit that endpoint this is my endpoint now i have hit and it is started executing here now go back now get all the jobs now at this moment of time my uh, my job is this second job it is running here okay so let me take this and put it in the notepad so that we can understand much better later on now go here it i think it is still running so i can hit i will get the same response again once it stopped execution okay 
once it stopped execution this will be gone nothing will be there that is okay that is good now come back to this object now if you see here this is the job details which is running what is that the name of the job is second job and the class name is this is the class name and the data we are passing to that is this one that means i am telling like don't run forever and i am telling the job to run for 20 times between interval of 1.5 seconds and initial offset is one second that means job will wait for one second before when you hit on run and here the group name is grp1 cool other things are okay fine no issue okay now this is when you are running this the scheduler in the ram without jdbc that is well and good but in my case i am running in the uh, jdbc saved details okay now what i am doing is go to the uh, common details i have this job details method i am not storing that information here let me store the job detail information even after the execution for that i am going to put it in the true so if it is false what will happen is it will store the job details uh, in the job detail table only during that execution if i kept this durable to false it will only store during that execution but if i keep it as true then what will happen is even after the execution it will have that information in the job details table so that i can refer it whenever i want it so what is the drawback what is the effect of that that we are going to see now so just run your application one more time so that your changes are going to be reflected okay so now you could see in the down the build is happening i hope you guys know how to connect your quasi scheduling with a database okay i have explained in my other tutorial some way uh, here which will come in the uh, youtube as well as of now i have not configured anything so i have just shown you those now you could see application is up and running okay my scheduler is also started running if i go here to the job detail table now you could see one job is there now if i hit all jobs one job will come cool nice now go here uh, to the end point now you see the first job is getting executed probably execution is completed now okay execution is completed now but if i put this here the job details are still there right if i execute this then the data is coming because it is configured to the database and it is fetching all the job entries here even though the job is not running there because of that property okay now i have one more end point right where i can schedule this second job right so now you click on send now you click on all jobs now you should see two jobs two jobs are running second job is running and that entry will be presented in the database table now you could see this entry is presented okay now go to the output and see whether this execution is completed again this one also will get executed for 20 times so if i uh, hit here two jobs will come even after the second job execution as well the two entries will come because the data being stored in the database table and is being fetched and if you see here probably the execution is completed now but here i am getting all the data cool now what i will do is i will remove these entries from the table and show you that two entries are done and dusted now if i hit this i am going to get empty response yeah so i have covered two scenarios here with respect to getting the job details right i hope this is not so confusing i hope you might have understood something yeah thank you so much for watching thank you